Hello guys, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and welcome to this quick vlog uh, where you'll see I'm shooting this on my iPhone uh, with my AirPods, being a man of my generation, uh, which I prefer to do on my Mac with QuickTime, but there, there was an update recently. Anyways, I don't want to go there. Uh, this vlog is about navigating a fretboard and solutions for the fingerboard on how to best uh, use your knowledge for single note applications. So of course, as this vlog goes and uh, every other video I put online, uh, this is about you and the stuff you can take away from it. So thank you for being here. There's thousands, billions of videos on YouTube about everything in guitar. So you chose to watch this one. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I'll do my best to fulfill my mandate and show you applicable stuff immediately. So let's get going. Super easy. There are three things I want to talk about today. And those three things are conceptually the things you can think of paradigms for your fretboard. And we are mainly looking at different paradigms for the fretboard for this thing to solve the note location issue. Because as opposed to other instruments, like you look at a piano, it's like here's a note G sharp, and there's one spot you can this here, press it, and that's the sound. On guitar, there's no such thing. We deal with different uh, dimensions. So say we have a, I'll use G major. So you have a G note here, the same here, and the same here, and the same here. Oh, it's a bit pitchy, sorry. Great Canadian winter here, right? So to, in order to prevent the question mark of going, I have a note I want to play, where should I play it? We segment our fretboard in several ways. And the first way that I want to address, and I'll show you also tips, the caveats on these approaches and how, uh, how to apply it, um, the first way that you've learned is by scale positions. And by position, we really do mean, uh, you know, sticking your hand in one place and then playing what's available to you there. You're not going here or there or there, you're really sticking there. So there's always going to be one location for each note. Namely, if I play the G major scale. So I'm playing every note that's available to me in that area, and every note always has exactly one location. If all you have done so far is learning scale positions, uh, I'll get, I want to talk about caveats much later, but one thing I want to, to do with this vlog is just to expand your horizon. There's no pressure or no rush in doing anything else, but if you have one way and you've never really explored the two other ways, well, maybe you can split your time in single note playing for soloing and improv that you want to explore your scales and using the two different, the two other paradigms, which I find personally as a guitar instructor have been um, put to the side a lot by students because people are like, oh, I have positions and it's safe and Joe Pass was teaching positions and let's just do positions. Well, you might, uh, but you're going to miss out on the rest of the fun, uh, which is way more fun. So let's talk about the second way. So your second way of vi visualizing the fretboard, navigating the fretboard, the paradigm or this concept, this mindset, is horizontal. Horizontal is selecting, say, one string, for instance, and playing all the notes that are available. So if I do G major scale again, I'm going to go G, A, B, C, B, E, F sharp, G, right? And this goes without saying, this also eliminates the note location problem, because if I play G, A, well, A, there's only one spot where I can play that A in that single string, and it's there, right? So it's also solving the issue, and we call this horizontal because uh, scale positions are vertical. Vertical, horizontal is that way. And it's a really great tool to me playing on single strings or sets of strings, which I'll get into in, in a moment, because um, it's really easy to, e to hear it. It's really easy to connect to your ears. Sorry, what's your uh, supper? Yeah, those vlogs are, I don't edit them. I just like shoot them like, this is me. Hey guys. Um, and it's Friday night too at the time I'm shooting this, so it's going to be an awesome weekend. I hope it's an awesome weekend for you too, guys. So you hear it because you're going that way, it's higher in pitch, like... If you improvise, it's really easy to connect it to your ears, and it's the same if you look at a piano, like, oh yeah, I mean, that way is higher in pitch, that way is lower in pitch, well, do the same with your guitar and it's going to really help. So it's a good, a good little exploration to, to do. And another thing I really like is you can do two string combinations. Now, if you do two strings and learn the notes of the G major scale, say on your top two strings and start with G, G, A, B, C, D, I'm going to go back down. Right, we're not really concerned about fingerings or anything. Now you have double stops you can do. <laughs> that's fun. And uh, 
uh, you don't solve fully the node location problem because your G is here and then your G is here five frets higher, right? So it's like, it's, it's a half solution to the problem, but it's really good for playing lines you really hear. And also the caveat for this one is, well, if you want to do jumps, well, the jumps are farther away. Because if you're in a scale position, remember that you have almost uh, two octaves and a half. You're here, and then uh, one octave, and then, uh, two octaves. And if you stretch, you're going to have 2.5 octaves. On your signal string, you get, well, 12 frets is one octave. So you get an octave and a half, maybe. And then if you're second string, then you get an octave and a half, maybe two octaves if you're lucky. So that's, um, that's a neat way to phrase, but jumping around means you have to physically jump around when you're doing single string, say. Well, if you're doing in a scale position, you don't have to move as much. So I'll get to the caveats of scale positions in a moment. And while I'm at it, I have some resources I wanted to suggest to you as well. So if you've never done the horizontal approach, I highly recommend you check out this book by, oh, sorry, but the camera's gonna mess the image up, I think. Does it? Because of the lighting. The Advancing Guitarist by Mick Goodrick. That book is great for everything and anything that relates to guitar. It's to be taken with a grain of salt because it's not a method book. It doesn't tell you what to do. It just shows you a bunch of stuff. You're like, all right, now go explore. You know, go in peace and play on single strings. It deals with single strings. It deals with scale positions. It deals with way more, also in harmony. So one of the things that... Uh, yeah, I don't want to get into that because that, that book is really deep. It's a classic. And I love the dedication at the beginning. It's just about Pat Metheny, of course. So uh, Mick was playing in Pat Metheny, with Pat Metheny in Gary Burton's band when young Pat, like teenager Pat Metheny, joins Gary Burton's band. So he's a legendary figure in and of itself. So now that we talked about vertical scale positions and we talked about horizontal, which is single string at a time, the blend of the two, so the third paradigm that you might want to explore, is diagonal scale positions. And by diagonal, it's basically a mix of two. So you will climb up a string, and people will call it like the violin scale or three note per string, right? They will say that. But the point of diagonal is you climb up a string as the same time as you at the same time as you climb up the fretboard. And there's other ways to talk about alternative to diagonal. So you're not quite in a position and you're not quite on single strings, you're somewhere in the middle, but I'll get to that later. Um, for diagonal position, the main advantage is that you can cover a lot of territory. If you do G and you start here and you do something like three note per string, it's not strict, but it's pretty easy to cover three octave plus because that's the range of the guitar. So that's very useful. Also, I found personally in my development, I found useful the scale, the diagonal scales to play bebop scales because you can have the same repeating pattern of digits of fingers for the same scale degrees of the scale you're practicing, which is not the case when you're in a position because in the position, different fingers will be playing the different scale degrees in different positions as well. So it doesn't, see, I'm already talking about the caveats of position. So it doesn't lend itself well to a lot of the phrasing. So you can't learn a Charlie Parker solo by sticking to one position. You have to be creative as far as how, where a certain phrase is better playable. And you do that by being equipped with your positions, by being equipped with single note playing and also diagonal. So let me show you a bit of uh, a G major bebop scale. So, so there's a passing tone here between five and six, right? What's fun is if I do this, you notice my fingering, I do the same an octave up. It's going to be the same finger that plays the same note. So essentially my G is always with my index, this always, my A is always my second, etc, etc. So same as with piano, when you play an octave here and you move your hand up to up or down another octave, it's the same fingering for the same fingers that play the same octave. So those are the main three paradigms, vertical positions, horizontal uh, single strings or sets of strings, and diagonal. Another thing about diagonal is, uh, once again, I, I want to insist that there's no right or wrong way to go about this, like study your positions, yes, study your single strings, yes, study your diagonal, yes, but what if you've been underexposed to um, diagonal, uh, you've been underexposed to single string, maybe it's time just to take some of that time 
to expand your horizons of fretboard navigation, right? And it's a pretty easy tip. It's pretty easy to apply. It's pretty fun to do as well. Uh, the thing about the diagonal scales that uh, uh, Mick Goodrick talks about in his book, uh, sorry, <laughs> say we take the C major scale instead. So G, S, E, D, right? Uh, you can do it in position. But he says, what if instead of doing three note per string or four note per string or a mix, what if you did two? So you would do C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So you see, you're going diagonally, but the fingers start to move backwards on the fretboard. How else would you come across this sort of pattern? I don't know. So it's just worth spending time. It's like a, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no, <laughs> I get students on Facebook, well, what position should I play? The giant steps Coltrane solo is like all positions. Like you need to, you can't fix your hand right there and glue it, you know, <laughs> nail your hand in one place and just play all over it. It's not going to work. Like, you need to be here and there and there and there. Mm -hmm. Just watch the, the guys play. That's how they play. Uh, so that's that's the three approaches. Now for the caveat. So there's, oh, sorry. I think my camera is shaking when I'm touching the table. So one of the things that I tell students is if you really want to dig into the positional playing and you've never done it and say that would be your weakness because you've been playing by ear or that you've been um, winging it. You sort of know your positions, maybe you don't, you know, uh, more blue stuff. So I would recommend that if you want to, like this is kindergarten, all right, you will be taken through, uh, you'll go through hell and back. You can buy these volumes separately. It's a modern method for guitar, one, two, three. The first page of the book in modern method is actually showing you that's your first finger, that's your second finger, here's how to hold the pick, that's a staff, here's a C note, right? It's like going from nothing to most professionals I know haven't really completed volume three, including yours truly, <laughs> no shame. I have, haven't really worked on, oh, well, maybe I'm like halfway through the third book, but then it's, it's nuts. It's like, this is in the camp of set your hand right here and play uh, C melodic minor scale, but then do all 12 keys C melodic minor scale by hand, keeping your hand the same spot. Mm. Ah, yeah, I know. So it's not necessarily good to go all the way like this after. You know your positions, you know your positions, uh, give or take, right? If you want to explore positions further, that's also the same author. Melodic rhythms for guitar. And most of the stuff is written with a a rhythm at first and then they show you a study and most of the stuff is since it's the same author and he was the Berkeley College director of um, guitar studies at this point he um, actually probably made it so it worked in this positional system a uh, sip of coffee uh, one thing I want to tell you before I let you go is that oh baby Woo. Sumatra and owl cup of course um, I'm doing this and much, much more when I'm working with students. Uh, and I will uh, encourage you to take a look at the program that is using a completely uh, revolutionary approach to, uh, to teaching not only scale positions, diagonal fingerings, and also single string. So the three paradigms are well blended in that mix in the program. It's called Jazz Guitar Mastery, but uh, it's not out. You need to put your name in, in this little box that you need to go to mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net. That's a URL, mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net. Even if I already have your email, I'll just click there and take this free six part training. It's gonna show you how it's built and how I use a concierge method, which is also revolutionary to really keep the pedagogy to a sense, uh, not overwhelmed with practice, but seeing all all pieces of information you need to see at a re reasonable pace, reasonable pace, sorry, reasonable pace, and have the songs at the same time. So that's just uh, self promotion. Mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net. Get your six part, six, <laughs> six part, six part free training bloopers. I love live vlogs. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. And uh, the other resource I want to point out. So the caveat of scale positions is that sometimes you will be stuck in a phrasing that doesn't make sense. So that guy will tell you, well, of course you're here, but it, what if you're here and there's that that's coming up? 
well, maybe you want to shift position with that half step. Oh, yeah, shift here or do this or do that. So it's called the, the logic, the fingerboard, fingerboard workbook concepts and logical fingering. Uh, no tabs. That's not for the faint of heart. But the point is you can get a lot of mileage by knowing your positions, but also having your positions not become very rigid and become a cult. Uh, so that's it for this vlog. Thanks for watching, guys. Please, I know you guys have been watching me forever. I see my statistics, only about one third of the people watching are subscribed to the channel. So please, I like to get that number to go up to 50%. So if you're watching, you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. And I will just let you go. Actually, I'll jam uh, for no reason. I will show you um, or attempt a solo on uh, three chords. So I'm going to take C major to F minor to B flat 13. And just uh, without trying to show off, just to show you that Sticking to one position is not always possible when you hear a phrase that you're going for. You need flexibility, and that goes with that idea of connecting the scales position, the positions you know, connecting your your linear things in a uh, horizontal fashion, and also maybe digging into some alternative diagonal fingerings. And that's it for this vlog. Thanks, guys. I will see you soon on Jazz Guitar Lessons. Not that improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. See you soon.